Hey, welcome to Bifocal. Today we have a pretty interesting show and uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. We're going to talk about what's required to manage a remote workforce. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. Today, I thought it would be interesting. Uh, we are in uh, day 15 of uh, the coronavirus, and it's March 30th, and just about everybody now is working from home. And uh, last week on our show, we, uh, we had Joe Stefan on. We talked about what was involved in setting up a remote uh, work environment. I thought today it would be interesting to talk about what's involved now that I got everybody working from home what are companies do, doing to manage that? And so I thought that would be a good show today. So I have a guest on today. I have Jason Weisner, Director of Production for Concept On. And uh, Jason, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And uh, this has been quite a, uh, a, quite, of ex a quite an exercise that we've gone through. And uh, I'm sure you have not gone through this before in, in your work experience. Never, 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 never. Yeah. So this is new and, and everyone's going through it. Right. And I think everyone's experiencing the same thing, but everyone also has their own uh, kind of unique things that they're going through. And so I thought it'd be interesting today to kind of from a production standpoint, how are you managing this type of thing now? Right. And so. I want to maybe walk back a little bit and uh, maybe just talk a little bit about yourself. And you've been with Concept for a while. Yeah, a while. Actually, this Thursday will be my eight years here at Concept. This week will be eight years. This, this week. Interesting. Interesting. So before we get, get too far down, just give me a little history of your experience here at Concept. Well, Concept, uh, again, this Thursday, eight years, started off in sales development, pretty much like everybody here at Concept. Uh, thought I was actually pretty good at it. Uh, did that for about a year and a half, um, moved over to training, and essentially inside of the training role, I took the process we had in place and designed a training program for not only internal training, but external training. Um, wore tons of hats over the years, gained a lot of experience, whether that's inside of the recruiting realm, did a little bit there. Also did uh, account executive role, essentially where um, I, a client would sign with Concept. I would go out, fly out, meet with those guys, put together a program and launch the program with the team uh, at Concept. Um, after that, director of production. So essentially I sit on top of the, the entire production of, of, of Concept. So you're, you're it now in managing the bulk of the remote workforce. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So when it came down to you that... Hey, Concept's going to have the, we're going to deploy people at home. What were your initial thoughts? <laughs> My initial thoughts was, how am I going to manage this? Then, then secondly, what does the day in the life of not only myself, but my team look like? Yeah. Yeah. Were, were, were you like, oh man, this is, this, this isn't going to work. I mean, <laughs> what, like, what were your major reservations? I think, um, I would say my thought was, was this going to work? I think that uh, we, from the technology standpoint, we, we have a great director there um, that I have nothing but confidence in. I think my thought was, okay, do we have a process in place and do we have the technology and platform for my team to actually engage and interact with, with the employees here at Concept? Yeah. And most of the software that you're using, you're using from a CRM standpoint, yep. you, you have Salesforce. Salesforce. Yep. 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 So tell me a little bit about your staff. What was what what did your staff look like as far as like makeup of your staff that you got to be managing now remotely? Yeah, wow. Um, well, from the sales development side of things, probably have over 60 sales development representatives that represent typically two, maybe three clients day to day. Um, then I also have production managers that that report underneath me. So they they're more hands on with the sales development representatives. Um, so essentially, I'm just working with, with those individuals. So you went from a um, 26,000 square foot floor yep. that you were managing to now you're probably working out of a bedroom or something at home. Yeah, 12 by 12. 12 by 12. Yes, bedroom. That, that's where my wife put me, 12 by 12. 12 by 12. <laughs> and don't come out till 5 o'clock. Nope, door shut up until 5 o'clock. Yeah. So uh, it came down, hey, we got to do this. What were some of the initial things that you went through and, and like, 
you know, we had Joe on last week, and yep. he talked about everything from deploying it. But you were a big part of that too, right? Because you had it was your staff primarily. Yeah. What were some of those initial considerations that you were kind of going through? Um, at, at least from my side, um, obviously. We, we were looking at the technology piece as, as a whole, um, you know, w- was these employees or were these employees able to actually work from home? You know, Joe, Joe covered that. My, my side of it was, did we have the reports in place where I can monitor and manage um, the employees? That was big to me. Um, then what platform were we using from a form of communication? Microsoft Teams, that was something big that I looked into as well. So were you using Microsoft Teams much prior to the deployment? Not at all, so not that, at all. That kind of came up to the forefront. Yeah, yeah, it did, it did. And I've been blown away by it over these past two weeks. I think initially my biggest concern and fear was the employees not feeling really engaged with um, not only the management, but concept itself. I think I sat back and go, you know, we're sending 60 plus employees home, right? That, that's big. And I think a lot of them could feel like they're on their own island, like they're almost like a consultant for the company. And I, I wanted to get something in, in place and Microsoft Teams was, was it, that we can do video conferencing, we, we can, you know, have these in-depth uh, discussions or team meetings, which it, it, it brought that to the table for us. Yeah. When you, um, as you were going through this planning stage, which you didn't have like a month to plan, no, not at all. It <laughs> not came all. pretty quick. Pretty quick. Did you have any employees come to you with like personal concerns they had about working from home? Uh, we, we had a handful. Um, we sent out a survey prior to us making this move because I think with everything going on, uh, we've been monitoring very closely, myself and the, and the team here at Concept, and we, we had a hunch it was coming. Um, but we sent out a survey just to get an idea of did they have the right technology and environment to actually do this? Um did they have distraction at home? Do they feel they can actually work from home? I thought that was big. Yeah. You mentioned a couple of times about technology and, and uh, reports. Yeah. Were there certain things you had to set up that you didn't have set up before, like from a reporting standpoint? Yeah, a ton. Like, like what didn't you have that you said, oh, I'm going to need now? Well, from the calling side of things, we work out of a, a platform called Nextiva. It's a soft phone for our employees to make phone calls. Um, previously, I think I was getting weekly call reports. What was the employees doing weekly from a call volume standpoint? Because you could see them every day. Yeah, every single day. I now have hourly. So, I mean, that, that, that's something different for me. So, I'm, I'm looking at these employees from an hourly standpoint. What are you accomplishing during this hour? So, it, it's extremely hands-on. It's big. Oh, man. Any other types of... Uh metrics that you're monitoring now that maybe you didn't or they've they've elevated to a higher visibility? Um, I've always looked at completed call percentage and close percentage, especially with the times now. Um, So something different I did was globally look at every single industry, every single account. What am I seeing from completed call percentage, which is conversations actually being had with decision makers and how many of them are we are we closing? So instead of getting these, you know, weekly, monthly reports, that's something I'm looking at daily. And that's something I'm comparing globally from an industry standpoint. We are, uh, I mentioned it when we kicked off the show, we're in day 15 of this. Yeah. You've been remote how long now? Um, I started last Friday, I believe, as, as my you first day. Yeah. About the, how about the workforce as a whole? Um, the workforce as a whole, we separated, I think we started, uh, oof, um, we, we separate them into essentially three, four different groupings. Um, so they, I, I think within a four day span, we had all of them working from home. Okay. So that the, the workforce has probably been two weeks now at home. Yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. Are you finding yourself now compared to maybe your first couple of days is, hey, I got I to figure out how to do this for a couple of days. Is it starting to almost settle in a little bit like, this might be the new norm for a while. And if so, how's that changing your, your, your thoughts? Yeah, I think um, it is kind of settling. And obviously, I'm paying attention to the news, making sure that, you know, maybe there's a chance of actually coming back to work. Who yeah. knows, right? And they just announced that yeah. it's now till the end of April. Yeah, saw that. Yep. So I think I'm preparing for just in case. I'm hoping that's not the case for at least for myself. I, I, I'd like to think I'm mm-hmm. extrovert and I like to be in front of people. Um, but I'm preparing for that, but also I think it kind of exposed better ways for me to actually look at production as a whole too. So I'm trying to look at it as as in a positive standpoint. Like I went from looking at these reports on a weekly, maybe some accounts on a 
daily basis, but this has provided so much insight in the way I look at different industries, different companies. And again, I'm looking at these things hourly, daily, weekly now, which, yeah. is, which is crazy. How has it changed? I mean, you may have said it already, but how has it changed the day in the life of you? Yeah. Because you're saying, hey, I'm looking at this by the hour now compared to before. And what's some of the pros and cons of that? I think, well, one, I, uh, I'm looking at things hourly, which, again, which is big. I mean, pros is I have a pulse on everything going on all the time. I mean, it's embarrassing to say maybe I looked at it daily, weekly before. So, um, you know, I always looked at things at a high level. But you had a visible yeah. pulse on it before, yeah. which you don't have now. Yeah. And I think, like, the negative side of it is I don't know if this is considered micromanaging now. Um, you know, that, that's not yeah. me. But uh, I think I have to. I, you know, I have to look at these things. I have to make sure production is moving hourly now. How do you know you're not knee-jerking when you're watching it hour by hour? <laughs> good point. I, um, no, that's how do you, good, that's how do you work through that mentally? Like, I mean, let's face it. I mean, you could have a good hour and you could have yeah. a bad hour. And True. that could have happened before, but maybe you weren't on top of it as much because that's not what you looked at. Yeah. So how do you, you're sitting home and you're, you're, would you say 10 by 12 or 12 by 12? <laughs> 12 by 12. That's 12 by 12. Better, yeah. And you're watching number. How do you not like knee jerk and form false opinions? Yeah. And well, I, I think I look at a comparison first. So I'm not really looking at the hourly. Like I know some people get distracted. I know some hours are better than others. Right. I think that, uh, you know, there, there's prime hours to actually call people. I, I get it. Right. But I, I, I look at daily comparisons of, 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 on the industry. I look at the weekly comparisons to make sure I have the data to support what I'm thinking or the direction I want to go. Yeah. What are some of the um, not so much metric driven stuff, but other types of things that is now changing? You mentioned collaboration. Yeah. How is that different now? Well, um, I think that especially in teams, we have more direct meetings now. For people now who maybe who aren't familiar with Teams, but maybe just describe. I mean, a lot of people are, but yeah. for those aren't, describe a little bit what that is. I mean, it's a, it's a platform where you're able to inter interact or engage with a not only a single person, but your whole entire team. Whether that's through chat, whether that's through video, you can collaborate on different projects. So it, it, it's been a neat tool. Okay. Yeah. Now you mentioned you have you have the SDRs. These are people that are on phones. Yep. Then you have PMs, per performance managers. Yep. How are you working with them now? Because those those people were probably in and out of your office. You were in and out of their yeah. their cubes. How are you interacting with them now? Yeah, all, all of it's through Teams. Um, we have our meetings, and I'll walk through that here in a second. But we have more pointed. You, you just mentioned everybody's in and out the office, like in and out of my office, having these small conversations. Um, now the difference is it's more pointed conversations. It's more conversations to move the needle forward. Um, so I'm seeing that as a difference. Um, I still engage with my, my team as a whole on a daily basis, but something that we, we, we do now is almost a daily meeting with each other. Um, and again, pointed daily meetings. It's not these random side, side meetings that are just to kill more, time. More focused? Yeah, focused meetings. It's, hey, here's my projects. This is what's going on. Let's set a game plan. That, that's happening daily. This working from home wasn't part of our plan. No. That just wasn't. The, no. Prior to this, you didn't have anybody working from home. No. You didn't work from no. home. Nope. <laughs> so it wasn't part of the plan. Are you getting anybody right now coming back to you saying, this is going to be tough to come back to work? I would say probably about 90% of the staff. are th their, their staff. Staff. <laughs> They're saying it would be tough to come back? Yeah. They, they like it. They enjoy it. Um, production has gone up. I think the... They, they tell me, I get them on the, on the phone, hey, I can call in my pajamas all day. Why wouldn't they want that? They're comfortable. So I think uh, they're seeing the performance increase. They, they like the environment. They don't see the distraction. How do you know, how, I should say, how do you not know? It's not part of a honeymoon phase, though. Like right now, because I know when you sent people home, you gave them some pretty strict marching orders as far as what was expected, right? Yeah. How do you know you're still not in that? How are you, how are you going to manage through that? Well, I think that's through the report side of things. I mean, I set the expectations when we sent them home. Hey, this is what I'm looking at. So I walked them through all the reports I'm looking at. I walked them through the hourly reports. I walked them through um, the numbers as a whole, what I'm looking at. I'm going to call you if I see something drop, right? So, I mean, you, you have to help hold at least some sort of accountability or, or to the to KPIs and metrics. That way, there is no honeymoon phase. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be interesting to see 
Yeah. You know, because I, I, I've also been aware that pro- production is up. And when you say production is up, just walk me through a little bit production to find that production is up. What's up? So from the production standpoint, a few things I look at. Number of calls. Completed calls, number of conversations I'm having and number of sales qualified leads that I'm generating. So when I say up, I think uh, the, the president of the company sent me a report the other day and it kind of blew me away. He sent me a report and it was each employee, each SDR is averaging 20 plus calls per day. Each person up. They're averaging 20 more, more calls per day. 20 more calls per day per person. But how are you, if I'm challenging and I say, well, how, Jason, I mean, as the, as the director of product, how do you know they're just not out there dialing for dollars? That's a, that's a good point. I so also look at completed call percentage too. Okay, so you got a, you got a counterbalance yeah. metric here. Yeah, I mean, you, you can fluff calls, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, you can build up the volume. I get it. But you can't fluff completed calls, actual conversations with decision makers. I'm seeing across different industries at least a 2% increase on bulk of the industries we represent today. Right. And I think the more more completed calls, more conversations you have with decision makers, the more leads you're going to get. So let me make sure I'm understanding. You're getting higher productivity. Yep. You say you're having more conversations. Yep. We got COVID-19 going on out there. Yeah. But yet we're catching people on the phone. Yeah. I think I think that was one of the things I was kind of nervous about. I didn't know what to expect. Were we actually going to get people on the phone? Um, was it going to be valid information or at least valid leads, right? Yeah. Um, were there going to be needs? And what we're finding, we're, we're placing these phone calls. One, if someone is there, receptionists are giving us direct phone numbers. It's been great, right? So, I mean, we're getting these individuals on the phone. They have an operation to run still. And the industries we're in, especially the material hand supply chain, there's needs. They need help, right? The, you know, the business has, has, has been, we'll, we'll just say booming for these guys. It's picked up. They need extra rental equipment, um, the, you know, the supply chain side of things. They have to ship more. Um, so you're catching people at their desk. Yeah, catching people at their desk, if not on their cell phone, as, as we're getting more direct dials. Yeah. There's another aspect of your job, though. I mean, you have the making calls. How are you validating their actual calls? Meaning, can you hear them? Yeah. Walk me through that a little bit. Yeah. So I think uh, we, we were concerned from a quality assurance standpoint going in here. Part of the process we looked at was, you know, do we have the reports in place, you know, monitoring the calls and everything we just covered. But my production managers, part of the responsibilities or at least task I tasked them with was um, barging into phone calls, like the live monitoring. So each of my production managers are required to do random spot checks on some of the employees just to make sure that we can hear the valid conversations. Um and we haven't seen an issue with it. Actually, uh, great conversations. Uh, I, I think people really do enjoy working from home. Yeah. So you got people coming back right now saying, hey, it's going to be tough coming back. Yeah. I like working from home. So that's going to be something that you have to address at some point, right? Yeah. I, th- I think we just turned into an executive office. Exactly. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? How how do, how do you balance working from home versus coming into the office? Do you have a preference? Uh, I, I, I prefer to actually come into the office. That's me. Um, if it was offered to me, I may take take a, take concept up at least one, maybe two days a month <laughs> just to have that. You're a people person. I'm a people person. I, I like being in front of people. I like engaging with people. Um, it's 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 been good. Don't get me wrong, because I do feel that I'm having more conversations with people, especially via teams. That, that's you think big. you're more productive? Yeah. Yeah. You think you are more productive? I can actually sit down and focus on Why? what I want. Why do you think you're more productive? Just I, I would say not interrupting, not being interrupted throughout the day from various different people has been big for me. You know, I, uh, I wrote a book years ago and, uh, I was reading it the other day and I, I have a statement in the book there that people working from home are the most inefficient people there are. Yeah. That was a statement I made 10 years ago. All right. And I still think that very easily can and is true at times. Yeah. But I think the difference is, um, I mean, obviously it depends on the individual, but I think it's also on the company. How's the company managing that individual? And then I think what I've learned over the years is there's this fallacy that just because I'm at work, just because I'm in the office, I'm productive. 
Well, there's a lot of interruptions in the office and yeah. people coming by your office, your cube, right? You go into the coffee pot and there's three other people at the coffee pot and therefore you end up spending 10 minutes over there, right? Or you go get a pop and, and we just think, well, it's just part of being in the office. But when you're at home, you don't have any of that. No, no. I don't, I don't think people are looking for that brief moment of downtime, I, that, that get away to decompress, go talk to someone. Because they could be on the phone for, what, one, two, three hours, like, all right, I need a quick break. Yeah. That quick break turns into 15, 20 minutes of, I'm going to stop by Jason's office, or I'm going to stop by um, th this queue, or I'm going to stop, to your point, stop, get a coffee. There's three, four people there, and who knows where that conversation goes. I'm finding myself now, if I have to call somebody, yeah, I almost feel like I'm interrupting them. <laughs> yeah. Where before, I'd just walk into their office. But now I feel like I'm interrupting them. It's focused conversations now, though. We're, we're it, thinking about what we're about to speak. Like, it, it's, what, what, what is the point in my call? Yeah. It's, it's focused. That, it, I, I agree. And it's, 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 a, um, it's a transition for me mentally with that. Because I, too, have, you know, I have an office now at home. I, I don't work in the office. No one's in here. You, matter of fact, you and I are the only ones here in, in yeah. the company right now. This 26,000 square feet. It, it was weird I. walking in. Yeah. Definitely different. Yeah. Did you have to unlock the door? I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. 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 So how important, how important has technology been for you during this? Big. I mean, I, I would, without technology, without the CRM, without the call reports, without teams, I would have no idea what is going on with the operations of concept. I would have no idea what people are doing from an hourly basis. I would have no idea what the industry is doing um, to even deem if, if, you know, it's declining or any type of success from our completed calls or lead volumes. Mm -hmm. Are you finding, um, and you don't, don't, you don't need to use names, but are you finding certain BDMs? Well, we used to call them BDMs. We're calling them SDRs now. Yeah. Right? Are you finding there's certain SDRs that at home they're thriving more than they did here? And are you also seeing maybe some on the other side? Um, I wouldn't say I re I'm really seeing anything on the other side. I, I will say I'm seeing more people thrive. Um, obviously, I think if I'm looking at things from an hourly basis, which I didn't. So, I mean, I'm seeing holes of high production people who, you know, may, may on a single hour or two, two hours not have a high, high call volume like they did. However, there, there's one person I, I, I'm thinking of in general, like this individual was averaging, we'll just say 30, 40 calls in, in a four hour span. That individual has moved up to, I want to say 80, 85 calls every four hours. Um, no distraction. Wow. Wow. Are you seeing any patterns or trends that are starting from a productivity standpoint? Like now you have this, you're watching it hourly. Yep. You have this remote workforce. Are you seeing a trend at all that says, hey, it seems like between these hours, for whatever reason, productivity just seems to be the highest and if so, is that any different from the past or? Not, not really. I'm not really seeing any trends when it comes from a productivity standpoint. I think there's always prime hours to call and there's always hours that um, maybe just were lower completed call ratios. Um, I think eight to nine when someone comes into the office, what, what I am seeing from eight to nine, there, there's been a trend of people getting their day started. Maybe that's a low hour of call volume. That, that's the hour I'm seeing kind of pick up. Yeah. Yeah. So you were heavily involved in the rollout phase. Yep. It came down that concept is going home. Did you have to come up with, I mean, was it rolled down to you that we're going to roll out five people, 10 people to start? How did all that come down well, to you? Well, myself and the rest of the executives, we, we've been meeting, uh, obviously, probably, I felt like every day almost <laughs> leading up to this. And um we wanted to test the technology because that's something we didn't have. We didn't have the technology for the security standpoint for the PCs to protect the data. And I think that was the and, biggest and thing. And all the tech, well, you had phones. Yeah. Right? Yeah, this, yep. And that was, I mean, Joe walked through a little bit of that bandwidth and because these are all voice over IP. Yeah. So how did you kind of go through and pick that rollout group? And what were some of your considerations in going through that? I think the first one was just health. Um, I was looking at people that could be more prone to get COVID or catch COVID. Then secondly, I was looking at top performers. So I wanted to do a, a mix to get a couple of our top performers just to get them out there, some of the veteran employees. Um, let's see if the production from our veteran employees or some of these top performers increase, but also want to protect the people that, you know, could be prone to catching something like mm -hmm. this. And then 
you rolled this out, but you didn't have 30 days to collect data. No. So it, what were the initial things you were watching? The initial thought was this was a pilot, so I had no idea what was going to happen after this. It was I, a three-hour like, pilot. Yeah, three-hour pilot. Um, it's like, let's just keep, keep them rolling. Um, so, I mean, one, I just wanted to make sure they can, they can work. Um, then I wanted to make sure that I had a plan in place between myself and my team with them um, that was efficient and we were communicating pretty good with them. How did you roll it out, like physically roll it out before you sent them home? Because they got sent home during the day, like at lunch, right? Yeah. How did, what, what did you communicate to them as you were sending them out? What, what was all that? What did yeah. it look like? Well, the first one, what we're talking about, this is a pilot, making that clear, not knowing that the next day we're sending the next batch out, but Nobody we, really knew. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, but we brought them back there and we just explained, hey, our IT department put together a step-by-step -step process on how to set up your computer, set up, you know, everything to get you up and running. The second part was, this is what I'm watching. I set up, this is how you're communicating with me. This is how you're communicating with my team. I'm watching your KPIs from an hourly standpoint. Here's my expectations for you guys. Um, that we, we covered all of that and then said, any questions? <laughs> Let's go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some of the biggest questions you're you're getting now, or even maybe not even question? What are some? Are you getting any? Well, I'll say questions, troubles, problems. Yeah. What are some of those things you're experiencing? I would say the only difference that I'm seeing now is that people are contacting me to let me know why their call volume was a little bit lower. That, that's really the only difference. Hey, Jason, I'm getting pinged. Jason, hey, what's that X calls this hour? Just letting you know, I had a, I had a meeting with my rep. And they're, they're just beating me to the punch. That's that's the only so, difference I'm seeing. So they obviously feel the accountability has gone yeah. gone up. Yeah. Would you, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. All right. President of the company is probably going to watch this. Okay. All right. Don't get me in trouble. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Answer it honestly. Yep. If you had to make a decision today yep. to adopt the work from home environment, yep. Jason, it's your decision today. Do you want to keep the, you, you either got to go bring them back in or you have to keep them home. It's one or the other, which, what would you do? I would set them up at home. You would? I would. Set them up at home. Not myself you personally. You we're we're going to have an executive office. I still got to sell the president you, on that. You're I'm, you're that comfortable right now yeah. that you think it's. You don't think we're in a honeymoon state. You think no. You're that's big. People are taking it serious, and I think that. And again, I mentioned earlier, my concern was that that connection with with concept. So that's something I really wanted to to build on. Um, so I made sure that's there. I think that's that's one of the key elements. So it's not, hey, hit your call volume. Spend do a little this. more time on that. I mean, you talked about teams, but go a little deeper. Yeah. To, you know, this collab. How how do you know their feeling part? Yeah. Um, so one thing I implement. I did a lot of research leading up to. I wouldn't say a lot because I only had a few days. Um, so <laughs> we'll just say I spent a few yeah, hours. But, but, but for the people that here. don't know you, yeah, they need to understand. What you do from six o'clock till eight o'clock the next morning is equivalent to what most people do in about 40 hours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen you leave at night and come back the next morning with a manual, <laughs> yeah. a binder this yeah. big of things. So my mind works seven years in advance. That's, that's what yeah. I always say. It's, it, it's seven years down the road. So how do you know? Because it's important, right? There's yeah. a lot of people that they like coming to work. They like the friends. They like the peers. They like the camaraderie. They like the feeling part of. Yeah. And and some of that, I'm sure some people are at home thinking, I don't like them. You know, right? Soon as Same as when we were working in an office, you had other people saying, hey, how come I can't work at home? Yep. But you as the director of production, president comes to you and says, Jason, you're making the recommendation to keep everyone at home. Prove to me why you feel people feel engaged. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a lot of pulse check. I'm not going to hide that. But, but tell some me of the, the things pulse I, points. Yeah. I'm, well, some of the things I implemented was I call it coffee break. Um, so this is every single day I have the production managers, which the, the SDRs or BDMs they report to. I have them run coffee breaks every single day. And they come in 8 o'clock. They're going to Starbucks and getting them coffee? Not necessarily. I okay, mean, they, well, have to provide, they have to use their own Keurig. They have to do their own coffee. However, the coffee break is the whole team meeting together just to start the day off. Even sometimes the afternoon, depending on how the production manager has it set up. Um, but 
let's walk through what happened today. Let's walk through the goals. Let's walk through concerns as a team. So everyone's on Teams, yeah. this platform that you described earlier. Yep. And they're uh, they're all talk. Everyone's talking. Everyone's listening to everybody. Yeah. Daily meetings with the entire company. How was your morning? Yeah. What that kind of stuff. What type of struggles? I mean, where are you? Uh, where are you focused on today? You know, what 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 hurdles are is anybody hitting? And we're getting the whole team involved. Um, you know, you have you can have 20, 30 SDRs on a single line talking about the objections, and some of our senior SDRs are giving them feedback. And in addition to production manager and myself, and you weren't doing this before. No. Why wouldn't you do it before? Like, what's the difference? I th- too too much to do pulling everybody physically together. I mean, what what were the re- like? I think I think deep down I always thought it would hurt production or at least the output. Um, you know how is is that much needed time? I mean every single day pulling anyway. them away from the phones. Yeah, taking away from the phones. I thought like I, I had something in place where I'd come in every single morning eight o'clock to eight fifteen, walk the floor, say good morning, see how everybody's doing, and you know I, I thought that was good. Um, but. I'm finding holes working from home, what I used to do previously, not only in reports, but stuff like this. I mean, we sit down daily and have conversations of what's really going on. Let's let's talk amongst our peers to see suggestions. Are you sitting in on any of those copy breaks? Yeah, I do, I do spot checks. Um, I'll, I'll randomly jump in, uh, get engaged. I also call every single, I wouldn't say every single employee every day. I put, I try getting a list of five to 10 employees that I'm calling daily just to check in. That's your pulse points. That's my pulse points. I'm checking in. How, how's the day? What, what are you seeing? How's the coffee break? What's your thoughts there? Are you feeling engaged with your production manager? Um, just seeing their thoughts. How do you like working from home? And that's where I'm getting the, uh, would rather work from home than come back to concept. Yeah. Wow. That, I mean, that's, it's amazing how it's, um, it's becoming a new norm, not just to work from home, but this, all the, all the social behaviors now are changing. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. Rapidly. Right. I saw an email go out last week that uh, they were having everyone send in a photo of their home workplace. I think it's due today. Yeah. It actually made me redo my my uh, my, my my guest bedroom <laughs> slash office this past weekend. Yeah. I told my wife seeing some of the the. Uh, the, the employees uh, set up. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting in four white walls right now. We got to do something with with the walls or decorations at least. Yeah, well, I know. I know. Um, for me, and I think even from the company standpoint, it's causing you to reevaluate. You know, you said you just said a minute ago. You said um, I was afraid to pull those impromptu meetings because I was pulling them away from production. Right. Yeah. Now you're saying. No, that's perfectly okay, and I can do it much quicker, Yeah, and I can do it much more effective. And I'm also assuming, and maybe you got some data points. Uh, when I say data points, maybe not like actual data, but Paul stuff. Are some people more apt to respond via the phone versus face-to-face? Like, you get more participation? 100%. Because I think you you have your some employees that come in they're they're focused they're ready to hit their numbers they don't get a chance to be seen or being heard uh, you know we don't get a, an, an opportunity to understand their mind um, so I'm seeing a lot of people speak up via Teams whether that's through the chat or in some of these meetings that maybe wouldn't have before no no and I, I've I've really enjoyed it because I I monitor the chats in in each team or each production manager they have a chat team yeah. that they're engaged with which is, which is neat but I can see some of these. SDR's minds now. Like, what are they thinking? I can see some of them take a leadership type role. That, that's been amazing to me. That's interesting. I'll tell you why I think that's interesting. When concept was formed, okay, the whole concept was you had to separate new business development, right? The cold calling, the lead generation, the prospecting. You had to separate that from any other part of your sales process. And the reason for that was it's different skill sets. So it doesn't surprise me that you're saying you're seeing people more apt to participate, more apt to collaborate when they don't have to be in person. Because for many people, that's that that job attracts that type of person. Yeah. Right. Those a lot of times those people are very confident when they're on the phone. Yeah. Very confident. They're not as confident face to face. For many, some aren't. Yeah. Okay. So in some respects. That really plays into some skill sets for people that maybe 
didn't feel they had that opportunity to express that. Right. I just think it's amazing how how this whole uh, work from home thing is just opening lots of things that we would have never considered. Yeah. We would have never considered to send the whole workforce home. No, never. Just made no would no. made no sense to us. Yeah. And here we are. Interesting. Very interesting. So what would you share with um, people like you? Yep. Right? That are managing a work uh, a remote workforce and uh, what kind of things would you share? What advice could you give some people? Advice companies. Yeah. I mean, from the setup side of it. Any company that's preparing for something like this, one, understand you, you're, you don't specialize in everything. You, you have a great group of individuals that work, in, work with you, I'm hoping, that has a specialty. It's great to communicate or at least set up something and pick their brains of the different departments that something like this impacts and how it could impact your job and get their recommendations. I mean, that, that's the first thing you should do. Let's get our top players together. Let, let's get their recommendations in their own uh, areas. And let's see how we can actually make this work. Secondly, do I have the right processes in place? I mean, do I have the right reports? Do I have the right processes to work and interact with the employees? And you, you mentioned earlier that you you had to go through and reevaluate a lot of that yeah. and change some of it. Yeah, it's, it, it's different. And I, I almost feel bad that I didn't look at things like I do now. I think, it, and you know, it's not discrediting myself or anything. I think I had all eyes on stuff, but it, it made me open my eyes and say, wow. I should have been doing this all along. It changed my role, right? Yeah. You were yeah. just forced into it real quick. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Then, then, then lastly, I mean, after having those processes, how you're going to engage with them is how am I monitoring production and reports, to, you know, it, with, with, with inside the technology. Yeah. Yeah. How about um, from at your level? Okay. Because you have peers. Yep. Right. You got sales peer and director of account development peer and right. How, how has it changed at that level? I think honestly, we're engaged more. Um, that's, that's the change to me. I think we, we all can have come together um, just as a team. And it's been amazing. Cause I think internally here at concept, we have a phenomenal team and I got to know them a little bit more. Not saying that I knew that didn't know them you got previously. to know them better yeah. by not seeing them every day. Yeah. Now it's, you know, preparing for something like you this. Know some people are going to watch this and they're going to think, those guys, they're crazy. What do you mean you got to know people? But that's what you're yeah, saying. We got to know them more, right? Because I think, you know, I respect everybody in the role. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is that I got to really understand their mind and their care for the company and how we're, we're going to deal with this current situation. And I got to do that daily with, with a great group of people. Um, so I really got to understand them and, and their passion for the company and passion to make this work. Do you feel like you've become, and I don't mean this in a weakness, you become more dependent on your peers? Like, I need you to take care of that yeah. side. You, so you become more dependent on them. Yeah. It's not as easy for you to jump fences. Yeah. It's, it's not my specialty over there. I, like, I get it. Those guys are better in, <laughs> in their roles. They're better in th their areas. I need to depend on them and understand what they're doing, right? And vice versa. Like, yeah. you, do you feel, you mentioned earlier, you had one BDM in particular, or you may have said a couple, I can't remember, but you mentioned people will reach out to you now and say, hey, Jason, I just want to let you know my call volume was a little yeah. over here. Do you feel your accountability has gone up? Yeah. Why do you feel that for you personally? Because I have to make it work here. You know, we're sitting on, you know, X number book of business. Um I, I, especially during this time, I don't want anything to fail or anything fall through the fall through the, the holes or cracks here. But do you think you report directly to the president? I do. Do you think the president is monitoring numbers the same as you're monitoring numbers? Of probably the even more, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, he, he's probably looking at everything even further than I am, I would guess. And he's looking at all departments. So, I mean, I'm trying to think you know, like, like the president would think and actually present numbers that he would agree with, or at least he's so you're, <laughs> you're the SDR trying yeah. to stay ahead of your manager. Yeah. You I, know, I it's do. interesting because if in fact that is happening, okay. And you're saying it is, doesn't that strengthen the whole group? Yeah. If everybody was doing that, or even if half the people were doing that, but it's half more than it was before, doesn't that strengthen the whole yeah, we're, we're a different company. We're a different company today than we were 15 days ago. 
Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm seeing, <clears throat> from my standpoint, I'm seeing the company change. And now we've been at this for, you know, two weeks already, and it's been announced, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to the end of the month. Well, it could easily go into May. We don't know, right? And even when they say, hey, okay, you can start releasing and people can go out, you know it's not going to happen overnight. Right. Right. I'm seeing the company begin to change, but I'm also seeing the company begin to almost adopt a new norm. Like, hey, I want to capture the things that are going very well right now, and I want to build on that. Yeah. And, and the things that we're capturing, they weren't things we were capturing a month ago. We're looking at things differently now. Yeah, completely. Just in a matter of a couple of weeks. And I have to, here's what I really find interesting, is I have to believe many companies are doing that. Yeah. So how is this going to change the production environments in many companies? Yeah. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. As you look back, and looking back is only two weeks now. Yeah. <laughs> Feels right? like an eternity ago, but yeah. Because you covered a lot of ground. Yeah. You moved a lot of people, right? You're managing a lot. And what is something maybe you would have done different? Anything I wish, you look back? I wish I had a plan for something like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, having some sort of, uh, at least open my eyes to have some sort of plan for unseen things that could happen inside of a workforce. Um, I, again, I think we had a great group of people that came to the table and we put together things we thought was good. And obviously as I'm rolling out production, how we're going to work with the employees and the technology there, how we're going to interact with them. I didn't know what I was walking into. Right. I think, uh, you know, maybe I tried something during this two week period of, Oh, this time I'm going to engage with the employees. That didn't work. I, I, I just wish I had that ironed out before jumping into here. Yeah. But nobody had that crystal ball. No, not at all. Nobody had that crystal ball. So the day in the life of uh, Jason Wisner has uh, has changed a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's a l- little hectic. That's what I said. So when you wake up in the morning, you walk into your twelve by twelve new office. Yep. What's one of the first things you do? The first things. One of the first things I do is just say good morning via Teams. And I, we have so many different teams. We have a, a leadership team, which is all the executives. Um, we go in there and we just say good morning to each other. You know, I find myself jumping into the other teams. So each production manager I mentioned earlier, they have the SDRs underneath them. Jump in there just to say good morning, right? And that's something you used to do physically. Physically, You used yeah. to walk the floor every morning. Yeah. So now you're doing the same thing, but differently. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I would like to say, I mean, we had a good process. I'm just finding a different way of doing this, almost the same process that, yeah. that gave people that, that feeling a part of concept, feeling a part of the team. Do you feel you're more focused as far as um, not just for the here and now, but what you're, look, what you're looking at or what you're planning to do over the next couple of days or next week? Are you more focused now than before, or how is that any different? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a nerve-wracking time, um, but I'm always looking at everything, just looking for trends and things I could make better. Um, obviously, I don't want to decrease or you know, fall behind the time or lose anything from the production standpoint. So I'm always looking at every area that's in my control on different ways I can better, and that's not on a you know, weekly, monthly basis again hourly, daily, I'm looking at these things and I'm just trying to drive that, that, that needle forward. Do you think from your standpoint as, as a manager of the group, do you feel you have a much bigger um, accurate view of the group? Yeah. Now, you, you think you have a, a more accurate view of the group now? I do. So based on that, I'm assuming that has to drive different behaviors from you then. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at globally what's going on inside of my group. And that not only includes my group, but our customers. Mm-hmm. That's interesting because um, I, I, I had a show a couple of weeks ago and we got onto the topic of managers not managing. Yeah. Okay. And I think in, in that particular show, I think we were talking about sales managers, sales managers getting too wrapped up and still being out in the field selling versus managing. But what I'm hearing from you is 
this this COVID nineteen and all the reaction that we've had to take for it, and this remote workforce, it's actually causing you to manage more than you were before. Yeah, I, I think I struggled with that. that. That was one of the biggest struggles I had. I didn't want to be looked at as a micromanager, be deemed that, right? And I think that that's anybody in my position, one of their biggest fears, especially if they care about the people and they want to mentor these individuals. And I think I'm pretty good at that, but I didn't want to be looked at as a micromanager. However, you have to manage it. It's, it's really, really important. And, you know, it, it, it's causing me to look at things different and, and, and manage people to it, uh, I guess, more efficiently and more often than I did before. Well, I think that's the key. You got to manage people, yeah, not numbers. You have to manage people. Yeah. Right. People's people is what moves the needle. People is what moves the numbers. And I think what I'm hearing from you is you manage the numbers, you monitor the numbers, you get a pulse on it, but you're also counterbalancing that with a pulse on real people. Yeah. You're talking to people every day. You're pulling them into some type of collaboration daily yeah because you got to feed them as well right they got to feel part yeah and and it's to them just getting them the understanding of the numbers then once you get them to understand you're going to get the logic and reason behind the numbers and where they're personally struggling at where they feel yeah right and that's when you're actually helping the people now where do you think though let's play this out okay let's play it out and um let's say uh six months from now, nine months from now, a year from now. And Concept maintains a remote workforce. Okay. And whoever's listened to this, if you're in a Concept employee, that decision has not been made. So we, right. Uh, We got to convince the president still. That's right. Yep. That's not your decision or my decision. But (laughs) how do you continue to feed people's needs? Do you think at some point people people got to be attached physically or do you think they're getting that attachment based on some of the things you're saying i mean i know they are today yeah. but it's still new yeah where do you think that how do you think that plays out i don't think they have to be attached physically as long as someone's growing and learning i feel they're attached to that company or dedicated one obviously communication is there right um, we're also using microsoft stream i didn't mention that technology earlier which so explain that yeah what we're, we're sending daily videos from each group in each department. I have videos going out on, on a Friday basis. It gives them, hey, this is what's going on in my group. This is what I'm seeing. That's big, right? And something else I've been working on um, to keep someone growing, because again, the people side of it, to keep them connected, you got to have them growing. So we invested in an LMS system, which is through Paycom, right? And I wanted to design continuous training. I actually sent the first one out. I started working on the new employee training via e-learning. What it is, is e-learning. Sent the first one out to, uh, today. Um, just to give to the employees to to help them. This one was getting past the gatekeeper. I plan on making sure that's that's available and that there's somewhere for, for them to go to continuously learn, to continuously develop. Can you monitor um, the activity? Yeah. Like number of people that are viewing it, downloading it, watching it? Yeah, I, I can see how many people actually watch it, how many people actually, because you can set up some perimeters. I can, I can force people to watch all the video and not just part of it. That I'm also putting assessments at the end of it to, to ensure, hey, you did watch this. So I can see, okay, you watch the video. For you to take the assessment, you actually have to watch the video and take the assessment at the end. So I knew what you actually retained from that. Interesting. Yeah. Just changing everything. It, it's, it's been a lot. It's keeping me busy, though. Oh, I, I can imagine. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like you got to learn how to manage a business now. Yeah. Right now, I got to learn how to manage it. Yeah. Different. Wow. <laughs> very, 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 very interesting. Well, I want to uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to come in. Um, I thought I, I mean, I was looking forward to doing this show. I mean, this is uh, it's there's not a playbook. No. Right. I mean, a lot of people have remote workforces. But I mean, but this has been rolled out for the country overnight. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that they just were not informed of this at all. And we were one of those. We were not planning on this. And so I was in, I was interested and excited to do the show because I was interested in talking to you about what are you seeing, good and bad. And, and I guess if I paraphrase, you've been surprisingly um, 
optimistic about it. You've been surprisingly uh, pleased with results, productivity. You found new ways to engage people, and it's just kind of taken on its own. Uh, it's a it's a new living organism. Yeah, it's a new living organism now. Yeah. Any last thing? Any last comment from your your side? No, as I said, it, it, it's been unexpected, mm-hmm. but pleasant. Um, and and it you know put holes inside of the my current processes for the good. You know, I'm better yeah. today. So um, just thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, it's been good. It's been good. If people wanted to reach out to you, how would they find you? You can find me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I mean, that's one. Um, Probably you, find you on Concepts. Yeah, website. you can look on Concepts website. I'm there. Uh, email. I, I could plug that. Jay Great. Weisner, W-I-S-E-N-E-R at conceptltd.com. Very good. Well, hey, thank you. Hey, thanks for listening in. If you want to reach out to Jason, by all means, uh, please do so. Uh, he, he's a good guy to talk to. He would enjoy taking your call. You can get all his contact information probably off of our website, conceptltd.com. Find him out on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening in. We'll have more shows like this. Um, this is This is becoming almost the new norm. So stay tuned for more shows like this. And hey, thanks for listening in.